Hi guys, uh, sorry about the long absence, um, it's been pretty much nearly a year since my last video. Um, to those of you who are waiting for a few more uh, budget reviews, um, I'm now trying to uh, find a way to get back into them. Uh, I, I'm thinking Mondays I'll film them, um, so apologies again for you know being away. Um, you may have noticed that things have changed. A uh, couple of people fed back on my older videos said they were a bit dull, so I'm doing my best to make them uh, a bit more interesting with, um, well, the uh, the intro, uh, that's that's a new thing, and I don't know what else is interesting. I don't know, explosions! Well, that was disappointing. <laughs> My hardware options have also changed. Um, I am no longer using my phone uh, because it was getting a bit too hot using the uh, camera and I couldn't see where I was in the frame. Uh, so I've got myself just a cheap camcorder. Uh, this is my first time using it so the video quality might be crap uh, but it will have to do until I sort of, you know, can afford to improve things. Um, microphone I'm using, uh, no longer using the T-Bone stereo condenser set for uh, doing the commentary. Uh, I'm now using a Tascam TM80 and this thing is incredible. I would highly recommend it. It costs £50 RRP UK. Um, you're probably looking about $70 in the US. Uh, picked it up thinking, Tascam, they used to be a reputable company, let's have a try of that microphone. And it's brilliant! The sound replication on it is astonishing. For the price, it's Perfect. Um, the only thing I would say about it, my only criticism of this microphone is that uh, I do have to sort of push the gain a little harder to pick up something from this sort of distance. Uh, if you're using it just for a vocal, it is really intimate, it's dead nice, uh, you don't get any of the room. Uh, but in distances like this, you might hear a little bit of hiss right now. Um, that's because the room I'm in is sort of really poorly uh, tuned for acoustics. Um, so what are you going to do? Um, one of my major hardware updates is I am no longer going to run the Marshall stack for the sound tests. I am going to be using my new Blackstar HT5 twin stack. Um, fantastic amp. 5 watts but valve. Um, and the way that Blackstar have explained their push-pull tube technology um, it can go head to head with an amp on stage. Um, you know, I've played it next to 100 watt amps. No one needs levels that 100 watt amps can get to unless you know you status quo or motorhead or something. Um, not that they're going to be putting out many tours now. Uh, but no, the Black Star is incredible. The gain channel is so smooth. Uh, it's really nice just for proper straight up middle of the road rock. Um, you can tweak it back to bluesy, it's got an option to sound like a more English amp or a more American amp, uh, depending on what you want to go for. It's even quite good for metal, uh, quite surprisingly. I don't think there's enough break up on the game to really go for metal. Um, it's a little too smooth, but I'm not complaining about that because A, I don't play metal, and B, it sounds gorgeous. Uh, plus, I can run it straight out into my computer, so you're not getting uh, any sort of uh, tone colouring from my microphones or anything like that, straight into the computer. Um, that's about it, really. Uh, my Zoom R16 that I said I'd be using in my introduction video, uh, I do still have it, uh, but uh, due to um, the fact that I've changed where I am, in the house. Uh, I'm not going to be using that. I had to get something that would fit on my desk with everything. So I've gone for the Focusrite Sapphire Solo. I think that's what it's called. Scarlet Solo. Um, just because I needed something that would fire up uh, my phantom power for the condenser. Um, and also it's just a handy little thing. Dead straightforward interface. Um, I think I paid £45 for it. Um, not going to complain about that. 
Um, and that's about it, really. Uh, so, anyway, on with the guitar. Uh, you know which one you're here for, you read it in the title. Uh, so, let's have a look at the Epiphone Les Paul Special 2 AFD, which is obviously involved with Slash AFD, standing for Appetite for Destruction. Um, to be honest, I hadn't really considered this guitar. Uh, I just sort of. I was thinking about getting a Les Paul Special too, uh, mostly because a couple of people had asked me, you know, what are the uh, what's the main differences between the Junior that I reviewed in one of the older videos and the uh, Special Two. Um, and apart from the uh, extra pickup at the neck, there's also the added benefit of a proper tunematic rather than a wraparound bridge, um, and the neck, uh, the profile is a little bit slimmer. It's almost flat at the back, um, very comfortable for uh, newer players um, and you know, even people who have been playing quite a while like myself if I'm not really feeling like playing a Gibson profile or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I hadn't actually thought too heavily about the AFD model, uh, I thought it was a little bit gimmicky, uh, but when I saw it in the shop, uh, the first thing I noticed was the triple-A flame amber maple cap, um, which is absolutely gorgeous, uh, offset nicely by the cherry mahogany finish on the back. Um, it's not really the sort of thing I'd normally go for, uh, but it just, that transition between the cherry and the amber, um, which is quite intriguing to me. So I picked it up in the shop, had a play. Um, and I actually found a little hidden bonus on it. It's got, you can see just here on the uh, the pickup ring, it's a little bit thicker than the other one, and a little bit thicker than it is on that side. And um, that's because it's got a built-in shadow tuner. Um, the shadow e tuner uh, is really accurate. Um, I've actually got one on my very favourite guitar. Uh, the review on that one's coming up later on down the line. Um, but no, really accurate, very bright. If you're just playing in your room, make sure you're not using it in a dark room because you'll end up with spots in your eyes for a bit and you won't be able to see properly. Uh, but on stage, when you've got a lot of lighting, it's really, really handy. Um, when I picked it up in the shop, it was it, it felt uh, gritty. Um, the frets and the fretboard felt kind of like they had a weird dust on them, almost like plaster dust. Um, so I figured when I got it home, uh, first thing I was going to do, take the strings off um, and you know, give it the good going over like in one of my previous videos. Uh, I do that for every single guitar when I get it, uh, mostly because I don't really want to be you know, rubbing my fingers all over someone else's DNA when it's a second hand guitar and also because you get that weird factory grime feel uh, with newer guitars um, obviously until you get into the higher budget end but that's not what I'm here for um, added bonus uh, in uh, the contents for this guitar uh, not only did you get the guitar <coughs> with the built in shadow tuner uh, you also got a um, slash uh, signature gig bag, um, an Epiphone strap, and uh, three slash signature plectrums, um, and the usual um, cable that comes with it, but it's alright as a patch cable, I wouldn't use it for an amp. Um, oh, the package also included uh, some online guitar lessons. I'm not bothered to take them, um, I'm, I don't do well learning. Uh, I prefer to teach myself. Um, yeah, it's a brilliant guitar. The ridiculous thing is, I uh, had a little bit of a cheeky moment and asked the shop if they could do anything better on the price. Uh, the RRP was, I think, £159 pounds, uh, UK. Um, and, you know, sort of said, you know, I'm in the shop a lot, you want to do a little something for me? Uh, so they knocked off uh, a few quid and I paid £132, 
which is an absolute steal. Even 159 pounds is a steal for this thing. It plays beautifully. Um, the pickups, they were supposed to be based on uh, Slash's um, guitar on the Appetite for Destruction album. Uh, I find they're not quite as mellow as that. The neck pickup is a little bit closer, a little more of a blues tone to it, but the bridge pickup is very harsh, it's very bitey. Um, but it's, as a rock guitar, it's spot on. Um, obviously you've got the tone control so you can sort of roll back for a bit of blues. Rolls back quite nicely. Um, everything just sounds really smooth on this. There's not much head change on it. I was considering putting um, a handmade scratch plate on, uh, the regular Les Paul shape. Uh, I was thinking of doing it in a almost translucent tortoise shell, but I didn't want to get a pre-made one. Even though pre-made ones will fit on these if you want one. Um, two things to note. One, that knob's going to get in the way. You can cut around it, that's absolutely fine. Two, uh, you're going to end up with two new screw holes in your body. Um, and I don't want to do that. What I was thinking of doing is using a thin veneer and uh, just using sort of a, a light adhesive to stick it on. That way it can be pulled off if I ever want to remove it again. Um, and I don't like having a screw or the screw hole right in the middle. So I'm going to make my own. Uh, I'm going to do a custom job on that. Uh, and I have ordered um, some um, white pearl uh, fret marker inlay decals. Um, got them from Creative Cuts, they've not turned up yet, uh, but I know a couple of people who have used them and they've had great success with them. Um, they're very thin, you don't even notice they're there, uh, and they're very easy to apply. There's not much else to say about this, it's solid. That's, I mean, that's all you can really ask of a guitar at this price. Epiphone have done a really good job. Uh, I've not found that it's got any sort of tuning instability or anything like that. And I'm dead happy with it. Um, the only thing I would say is I don't understand why uh, a lot of manufacturers still put on the conical uh, strap buttons. Because the straps slide off. Especially with less pole shapes because you've got the uh, the button is on uh, the upper bout just there and it's sort of almost pointing up so any tension and you can yank the fucker right off so I think um, more manufacturers should be using uh, mushroom strap buttons which I tend to put on all my guitars anyway uh, I just haven't got around to do it on this one <laughs> as a special treat and an extra apology for spending, well, for, for it being so long since my last video, uh, I figured I'd not play this one uh, for the sound test. Uh, I would put it in the hands of a good guitarist. Um, so my buddy Luke, he's mad about Slash, um, so I figured he was the perfect person to go for this. So see what you think. Mm -hmm. 